हेलो एवरीबडी माई सेल्फ ज्योति मयकर एंड दिस इज लेक्चर सिक्स ऑफ पार्टिकल नेचर ऑफ वेव्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द कॉम्पटन इफेक्ट एंड टूडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट एक्सपेरिमेंटल वेरिफिकेशन ऑफ कॉम्पटन इफेक्ट सो हियर यू कैन सी द एक्सपेरिमेंटल अरेंजमेंट फॉर स्टडिंग कॉम्पटन इफेक्ट सो दैर इज अ इंसिडेंट बीम ऑफ एक्स रेज विच इज मेड टू पास थ्रू कॉलिमेटिंग स्लेट्स हियर यू कैन सी टू स्लेट्स एंड इट इज मेड टू फॉलो ऑन अ टारगेट the target which is used over here is graphite foil the beam x-ray beam it gets scattered and it is received by x-ray spectrometer so let's see so a beam of monochromatic x-rays is collimated and made to fall on a target the wavelengths of the scattered x-rays are measured at various angles using x-ray spectrometer at each angle theta the scattered beam is found to have x-rays of two wavelengths lambda and am lambda dash that is what we have studied in case of compton effect what is compton effect when x rays they are made to fall on a target the scattered radiation it consists of a wavelength which is same as it of the instant radiation and one more wavelength which is slightly greater than the wavelength of the incident radiation so here we get lambda and lambda dash lambda is the wavelength of the incident beam lambda dash is found to be slightly greater than lambda and if we plot graph of i versus lambda for various values of theta then we get some figures these are the figures which we get so you can see for theta equals to 0 there is uh, no lambda and lambda dash but we get only lambda that is the wavelength which is same as that of the wavelength of incident radiation when the angle of scattering is 45 degree then you can see the shift between lambda and lambda dash it is small when theta equals to 90 degree the shift lambda and lambda dash that difference it goes on increasing and for 135 it is more okay so this is the result of compton scattering so what are the observations the graphs in figure show that as theta increases the compton shift which is shown by delta lambda which is nothing but equal to lambda dash minus lambda also increases if the observations are repeated with x rays of another wavelength delta lambda for each angle remains the same it implies that compton shift it is independent of the wavelength of the incident radiation if the observations are repeated with another target delta lambda in each case remains the same it means that the compton shift is independent of the nature of the target and these three points are also proved by equation of the compton shift last time we have seen the compton shift equation where also i have discussed these three points hence the agreement between the theory and experimental observation it is excellent in case of compton effect now uh here we get one line which is having wavelength same as that of the incident radiation another line which is having wavelength slightly greater than the wavelength of the incident radiation the line whose wavelength is same that is called as unmodified line and the line whose wavelength is slightly greater that is called as the modified line in compton effect now we want to know why we get the unmodified line in compton effect the question of the presence of unmodified wavelength lambda along with lambda dash for each angle still remains to be answered in deriving equation when we had derived the equation for the compton effect that time we have assumed something what we assumed we assumed that the scattering electron is able to free move freely we called that electron as a free electron now when the photon incident photon collides with the electron it passes on some energy to it which becomes its kinetic energy which becomes kinetic energy of the electron now as it is free to move that is called as kinetic energy now in matter there are many electrons which are very loosely bound to their parent atoms and hence are practically z uh, practically free that is how we call that electron as a free electron now collision of photons with such electrons results in the modified wavelength lambda dash that is what the reason is for getting the wavelength which is slightly greater okay now uh, but collisions here what we are assuming that the collisions are taking place with the electrons which are loosely bound collisions do occur with tightly bound electrons in the target also in such case the incident photon passes on the energy not to the single electron but to the whole atom to which the electron is bound and hence in the expression for compton effect 
the uh, m0 it should be m0 it is the mass of electron that should be uh, replaced by mass of the atom so we have delta lambda equals to h upon m0 c 1 minus cos theta where m0 is mass of electron now here when we are talking about the collision with the tightly bound electron then in that case that m0 it should be replaced by mass of atom and if we do that as the m it is in the denominator if m is bigger naturally the shift will be very small so that makes the delta lambda practically zero and we observe original wavelength lambda in the scattered radiation of those collisions so this is the reason why we get the unmodified line so we get unmodified line when the Uh, incident photon it collides with the tightly bound electron and we get modified line with the incident photon it collides with the loosely bound electron since compton effect cannot be explained classically classically in the sense we are not able to explain compton effect if we consider the wave nature of light that is what the classically term means so here we are not able to explain compton effect uh, classically it provides another confirmation of particle nature of waves which is the foundation of quantum mechanics thank you thank you so much